Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a 1.0 release. Yes, this is Plasticity 1.0. It is a very uh, interesting and somewhat unique 3D modeling tool uh, that I covered about a year ago when it was in free beta. Now it is available, it is a commercial project now, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, but there is a pretty full functioning 30-day free trial. That's what you're seeing in action right here. So if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, uh, again, all major platforms, 30 days free to check it out, and then it's like $99 or $300 depending on who you are. We'll get to some of the pricing in just a second. Now, I've opened this one up. I'm using this OBJ file to demonstrate the kind of stuff that you would model with it. This isn't actually my work. This came off of Sketchfab. I'll show you how you can go ahead and grab something like this yourself if you want to check out this more of this artist's work. It's very nice work, by the way. Uh, so, but this is the kind of thing that you would design using this tool. This is a NURBS-based modeling tool or a non-uniform relational B-spline, I believe NURBS stands for. This used to be the way that uh, a lot of things were modeled back in the day and kind of getting a little bit more popular in the world of 3D printing now. So this is kind of combining the NURBS-based approach and the um, uh, modern 3D modeling tools together. So here you can see there are hotkeys available for all the major platforms. So for example, right now, out of the box, you hit the G key to move things. So I select this guy, G, move, S, scale, and so on. So it's a typical Blender out-of-the-box experience. Even more so, let me go ahead and show you a new scene. When you create a new scene in this guy, <laughs> there's a default cube we can sacrifice. So it is very Blender-inspired, but there are key bindings for all different platforms out there. In terms of how you work with this guy, well, there are a couple of different ways. Again, uh, you've got a number of different shapes over here that you can work with. So we can start with something uh, like a cube, which I just kind of killed. So here, 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 enter, and then we pick the direction, bam. So we got our cube going on in that regard. Now, one thing I do find very frustrating, you notice in the command, so I could go ahead and we could change the width out here. We can we can work with things numerically and have more precision over things. But when you're done, you either have to hit enter or click okay to commit things. And I screw that up all the time. So we got a standard surface going on here where NURBS and, and these kind of surfaces work very well. And if you've used um, hard ops for Blender, this is gonna be a very ex familiar experience for you. But what we can do here is go ahead and create other shapes. So let's go ahead and create a sphere like so. And what's nice for the sphere, so let's go ahead and enter that. So we'll move this guy over and we'll bring this in over here and up here and over here a bit. The nice thing always about uh, working this way is it's very good at Boolean. So we go here, we can Boolean out that object right there and you see it's immediately removed. And we can actually, it's we can do it at any time. So we can have that in the shape right there. Uh, and we can have it either keep the tool or get rid of it. The enter commits, boom, that shape is cut out. The other area where this thing really shines is going to be edge work and filleting. So for example, I can come in here, I can switch to edge mode and I can pick that edge right there and we can kind of make new filleted shapes out of that shape. So you see here, if you're trying to create something precise and mechanical with real well-defined edges, you can do so quite easily. So this will work if you've done any box modeling, it's gonna be a familiar experience, but you're not really working with polygons, you're working with surfaces. So there, okay, enter to commit. We can also do the same thing with, um, so here the faces are selected, that's whole shape around here. You're gonna notice when I select something, the tool down here that are available for it, switch. So we got a variety of different tools here. So what I'm going to do, we can do an extrude. So I'll hit E and we bring that out. And then we can bring that surface out there, there and then get enter when you are done with it. Now you're gonna notice it didn't create a new face here. So this isn't a single face. This whole thing now uh, is a face like that. So it doesn't work like polygon modeling. It's a very different experience, but it does fill it corners really, really well. So again, come here, we can select, I can select, again, press enter to commit. It drives me nuts, to be honest. So here we've got that multiple surface that, that went across there. And now we can we can fill it that surface right there. So you can recreate really, and then here again, enter. We're gonna show you how it deals with a corner in this example. So there, and enter. So it just, it knows how to deal with those uh, weird edge cases and it creates these nice solid models that you can work from. Now at the same time, you can also work from curves. So let's go down here. And you're gonna notice there are snapping tools as I go. I can have it snap to planes. I can have it snap to surfaces of other objects. And boom, so there we created a surface. Again, you get a different set of tools down here. So you see here we can do things like I can project one curve onto another surface. I could take multiple surfaces and have them uh, loft them out. Or what I could just do is take this one surface we just created and I can, um, I can extrude it out. Oh, so we're extruding in the wrong direction. All right, so that's not really what I wanted. But there, you can see, so you can create objects 
like that as well. Uh, so you got really great Booleans. You've got, uh, again, the hard surface workflow. You're great for making mechanically type things. You do have all your snapping tools available over here. So again, all of your creation stuff is available over here. So you got the curve tools, you got various different uh, polygonal shapes, you can well, semi polygonal shapes to work with. Uh, and then of course, we got we could do things again, I could just start with circle like there we got fine-tuned control of it down here so we can change the radius if we're happy with it enter it like there again i could come down here and say okay let's extrude that guy out extrude that guy out like so and then enter and then let's say i want to go ahead and i think it's shift d yeah so i duplicated it move that guy over here i'll we'll move that guy over here like that so if you're interested in checking out plasticity again they, they call it cad for artists and that seems to be kind of fair uh it is commercial now but there is a 30-day trial available all the major platforms are covered here so you got windows you've got um intel and m1 slash m2 powered max and then you've got um Libby, uh, Linux Deb version of the installer. So it is for solid and subsurface modeling. Uh, it is aimed again at game creators, product designers, and so on. The two things I find most similar to this guy would be uh, it's kind of like um, hard ops for Blender or like Rhino, a NURBS based modeler that you probably haven't used. Uh, but it offers all the power of NURBS modeling combined with the workflow innovations from polygonal modeling. So if you're used to polygonal modeling, it, it's just a nicer way to work with things than what traditionally working with NURBS is because NURBS is normally working with a lot of curves and so on. And this, this generally simplifies it a little bit. Um, it also has interop with uh, existing CAD programs. A lot of it, if you're not working, you're not going to want to have iGIST support. You don't care. Uh, but it does have access to all of those things. Also has an advanced uh, filleting engine, uh, which it does quite well. And the workflow is very streamlined. So you can see here the hard OS inspirations are not, uh, you know, by accident. This is definitely if you are works used to working with hard ops, you should feel at home with using this one as well. You can customize all of the tools. And then as we saw, there were bindings for most of the popular 3D software that's out there. And it is on a perpetual license base. Basically, once you buy a license, so, so example, this indie license, you get all of the 1.x updates. So until there is a 2.x release, you get all of those updates there. And then even if they release a 2.x, you don't you know, have to stop using your 1.x. You're not forced to upgrade or anything like that. So it's kind of like how software used to be. Uh, again, there is a functional 30-day trial out there. Uh, it allows you to import, allows you to export. So it does seem to be pretty full functioning, uh, but does not give you a license, obviously. So you can't use it commercially. The $100 version, though, does give you commercial use, which is nice. Um, and then if you want to jump up to the $300 version, well, what is the big difference here? Uh, it's node locked. So this one can only be installed on two machines. This one can be installed on up to four. Um, and so like, for example, if you had like a Windows and Mac machine or two different Windows machines, you're fine here. But if you've got multiple machines, you're going to need this one right here. Uh, on top of that, you've got some more file uh, import and export versions here. These are things like I just is like dedicated product design stuff. You're, if you're not in CAD, you're not going to care about importing I just or ASUS or uh, the things that you can't work with here. Um, and then the other big thing here that is different is if you are at a company that has more than 10 employees, you have to get this version here. So as long as you're from a small studio, this version should do for you. If you are a game developer at a small team of less than 10 people, this one right here is fine for you, gives you everything you ultimately need. So if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, it is available at plasticity.xyz. Uh, I'm not sure ultimately if it will prove useful to you, but if you're looking for that hard surfaces, nerves based modeling environment, but you want to take your polygonal skill set to it. Uh, it's it's a nice program in that regard. Now, I did mention earlier on uh, that there was a version of uh, the mesh that I used here. Uh, it came from this person right here, uh, Jekka Torina. Cult I, I'm not even going to try. Basically, it's her work. Uh, credit to her. It is available up on Sketchfab. So if you want to go ahead and check that model out yourself, it is available up on Sketchfab. And that's what I ultimately used. Um, so again, a very interesting program, a very interesting workflow. Uh, is it worth 100 bucks? That's ultimately up to you. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of that price tag. Let me know what you think of the idea of, you know, buying and owning your software for a change. Uh, all right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.